Johnny! Hey, Thad, hey. how's it going, man? Good to see you. Thanks good. for coming in. Of course. Uh, you look sharp. You look really good. Well, you uh, said to dress up for camera, yeah, so... Yeah, yeah, I wanted you, know. you to dress up. Uh, I, 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 I'm I assuming definitely... it's not for the league reuniting. It's not, unfortunately. Uh, not just yet. Maybe someday. But uh, I've got some really good news. What's up? Uh, I'm going to have you at the announcer's desk for the, today's Intergeekdom match. You're finally being on the desk. Seriously? I just got word. Yes, this is what oh this is God. happening. Dude. This is happening. Thank you. I mean, I've been waiting for this opportunity for years. I mean, you know I've worked in pro wrestling for a number of years. You are a wrestling fan. But getting fan. here, this is where I wanted to be. I know calling matches is exactly what the Schmodown needs. Yeah. You're the right guy for it. <sighs> I'm right. really excited about it. So let's get you on the desk for the Intergate to match. I'm ready. Come on, let's go. Bam! Yes! Here we go, baby! Talking, you, you're talking about a uh, five-way. Yeah, yeah, an intergeekdom? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five-way five -way match. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Uh, we're going to do things a little different. We're going to do uh, a tournament. It's going to be an intergeekdom tournament. No, 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 no. We don't have time to do all that tournament stuff. Let, we have to get, let, let, we have let me to stop, let me stop you right there. Yeah. Because I think this might interest you. What the hell is this? <clears throat> You know what? I, I think I think a tournament probably sounds like the better option. Uh, I think we could probably squeeze that in. How many players were you thinking? So you think as commish, you can make that happen? I, I th yes. I think I think I can. Uh, I can make that work. Yeah. Can you make sixteen people work? Congratulate you. you. And like it. I, I, I think wonderful do. idea. Mm -hmm. uh, and now that you've won, right. your next match will be in round two against Rachel Cushing at let, the Collider let, Collision. Let me stop you right there. That's not going to be then. So, what's going to happen? You get Dottica and Burnett. I'm playing the winner. Rachel, Zippy, do that. That's going to be Collision, okay? You got that. Video number two, and we're going to start out here with the Inner Geek Division. And as you saw in the sketch before, you talk about someone who got an opportunity, and he's here on the desk. Johnny the Mouth Laquasto is on the desk, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Christian. It is surreal to be here. Usually, I'm calling the action at ringside, but I couldn't think of a better seat in the house than right here for the collision, especially with Rachel the Crusher Cushing. All right, 2017 Rookie of the Year. One half of the Shire was a cornerstone of the Fife Club, and she came so close to being champion, she does a lot of damage. Crusher is the perfect moniker for her. Well, she might have been close to being the champion, but someone who is champion is sitting at the desk, part of the Five Horsemen. There he is, Jason Justice Inman, the champion is here. 
It is an absolute pleasure to finally be on this side of the desk. It's also a good spot to judge the upcoming competition whenever I have to finally defend this baby. Well, that's the thing, is that this round number two is in effect, and we've had a strange thing. We were supposed to have a fatal five here at the collision, but Mike Kalinowski did something, has something. Your <laughs> former friend, I, I guess. Don't really said, get me started. I apologize on that, <laughs> but what I will say is that he was, yeah. Sorry, real quick. Yeah. Uh, Johnny, I know we, we spoke earlier, but yeah. I actually, I, I'm not going to be able to let you work on the desk today. What do you, what? Yeah, we're in the middle of a match. Yeah, what? No, 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 sorry. I, we're, we're, what do you have in your hand? Thad, we just yeah. Is it blood money? No, no, I'm sorry, buddy. I, we, we, we talked about it, but it You just, can't, that's embarrassing, Thad. Yeah, you no, can't. I, Thad, we just, I, I just got here. In front of the belt, no less. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, champ. I'm, we have an entire. Just, All right, yeah, sorry, Johnny. Go, Johnny. Oh. I'm sorry. Well, who's who's gonna? Yeah, I, I, we've, we, we, we've got a replacement. So, John, yeah, just. I, I'm right. sorry. I don't know if I sorry, did something, John, but it's I. It's kind I of a rotten. It's kind of a rotten thing to do to somebody. Yeah. He got dressed up too, man. It's, yeah. it's yeah. kind of a rotten thing to do to somebody. Tied, so. All right. All right. Wow. Take care. Well, take care. All right. Wow. All right. Well, who's yeah. who's next? We've got. I've, I've got somebody else that's uh, gonna join. join yeah. Us. Who? Uh, buddy, can you come on out? Oh. oh. <laughs> I don't know what is what is yeah. nice to see you, bro. Yeah. Sit Hello, down, sir. If you get you, I, if you have to, I, I, don't, I think I should be asking you at this point. Oh, I should sit down. So can you? You can sit down. Okay, thank you. Can, can, can you put that on, please? Chip, how you doing today? Uh, I'm I'm good, Mike. I, I have to tell you this. I. I've respected everything you've been doing. I appreciate the fact that you've said no more five ways. Yeah. But. Um, You've been saw guerrero it up here, my friend. You've been throwing grenades into the inner geekdom everywhere. Like, what's going on? Well, when something doesn't work, you fix it, right? That's well, the problem. I mean, sure, that's, but that's you fix the, it with finesse, not yeah. explosions. It's the way that you've been handling yourself lately that I think people have the issue with. Well, people have a problem with it? No, you've been doing great with yourself. You've been, you, you, got, you love I, your ass. You've got, you got a shit eating grin on your face. You're doing great. <laughs> I don't hear any problems. All right, well, listen, anyway, you know? so what you have, you could have been in this match today, but you I decided could have. you didn't want to. No, you, you, know. you said you're going to play Burnett or Donica instead, and right. you're not going to be against Kushner. Instead, you put uh, you put Zipper in here, who who challenged you. Yeah. And and now you're making them play each other. So uh, this is all you're doing. Are you I, excited I, with yourself? I look at it as a way he should be thanking me. He oh. wouldn't be here if it wasn't for me. Okay. Because Same we, way that you told Mara Kanopic that she should be thanking you uh, the last time we saw you guys. Why should everybody be thanking you? It's right. not wrong when you're right. Okay. All right. Well, all right. well it know. looks like there's no. All right. All right. So a lot of you're, you're going to be here today, too. And what I and will, I'm going to keep things. On the level here today. Right, we'll That's what see. I'm here for. All right. Well, we're also going to let respect. you guys know to be to to be fair here. Both these guys will be asking the first round questions only. They will not have access to questions two or three. Obviously, Jason Inman mm -hmm. being the champion, and M Mike Kalinowski, who is still inside of the tournament at this moment, he will also not be able to answer. Excuse me. Ask questions from round two or three. Sorry. Right, let's look at first. We've got to hear from the competitors. Here we go. Look, I'm really excited to be here. It's the Collision. I debuted last year and I got to play at the Collision. The lights got to me a little bit, but I'm back and it feels really good. But before I get to Zipper, we have to talk about Mike Kalinowski. Super Zip is back. I'm here at the Collision. It feels good, you know. Uh, there's a part of me that's grateful to Kalinowski for kicking this whole tournament off. I'm here. Uh, but also, I still got my sights set on that guy. Here's the thing. Mike gave us an inner geekdom tournament, something that we have wanted for a long time. We've got newbies coming in. This is a legit division of the Movie Trivia Schmodown League. So Mike's onto something. He's not that, you know, Dagnino heel. He's not Jay. He's he's clever. He's up to something. He's in the background. He's pulling strings. But some of those strings are things I'm fans of. So I don't know. I don't know exactly what's going on, but here's the thing. You're not gonna be able to trick me, Mike. I'm going to face this opponent, and then I'm going to face my next opponent, and then I'm going to face you eventually. I'm going up against Rachel Cushing today, which is a little bit intimidating. She's obviously a huge player in the league. Uh, a lot of people think of her as one of the heroes of this league, but I'm the new hero. I'm here to make a difference, you know? So if I can beat Rachel today, that'll put me on the map, and that'll just clear the path to Kalinowski, because, you know, he wants to be the villain. I'm coming for him. I'm coming for him. Eric Zipper is a force to be reckoned with. There's no denying. He has come into the league with world's finest. I'm very impressed with that team and what those guys are doing. And then he played a really great match against Mike Carlson. So I don't underestimate him. I respect him. Who wouldn't respect him? I respect anybody that steps into the light and brings their geek knowledge to the table and wins matches. I know that Rachel is invested in this. She practices. She knows her stuff. 
and I just think that if I can beat her, it shows that I'm a serious contender in the Schmodown, both in the inner geekdom and in the team league. This is home. I've said it again and again. This is where I belong. I am going for that belt. Mike Kalinowski be damned. Whatever his plan is, match by match, I am advancing through this. So Zipper, I, do, I totally respect you. I think that you are great for the league. I'm excited that you're here, but I'm going to win. Well, Rachel Cushing, obviously, very, they're both taking shots at you, Rachel oh. Cushing and, and Zipper, saying that they don't know what your intent is. Some it's even going so far as calling you Thanos. Oh, is that what they're going to call yeah. it? Like doing the snap a of the finger, finger changing it, it up? Changing you it up. do look a little purple to me. I'm yeah. not going to say no to that. <laughs> You're not going to say no to it. Well, Was the guy wrong? Was Thanos wrong in what he did? I, I, I can't believe I think, we're actually asking that question. I know. Well, that, that, was that, it wrong? I think that t that's indicative mm. of exactly right. the way okay. he's going through. Now, Fair I think enough. that the thing is, too, <laughs> that you look at what they're saying, though. Zipper has a lot of the respect from uh, Cushing. Cushing the opposite there, too. I think that they both respect each other as players. Now, look, Zipper and Cushing are also going to be doing battle in teams down the line, mm -hmm. too. So this okay. is really the first time they're going to go head-to-head, -head, but this is somewhere that Cushing is very comfortable at. Now, some have, have thought that maybe you put Cushing in this because you think she might not have the pressure of the big event, but this is a different Rachel Cushing these days. She's been in these big matches, I'm Jason. She's focused. Yeah. I, Rachel is now focused, and a focused Rachel is a dangerous Rachel. But Zipper is a little bit of an unknown, and it'll be interesting to see how he goes against a big competitor like Rachel. You know, it's interesting. I, I will not talk bad about Rachel. Rachel. She has earned what she has out there. People are saying that she's, you know, cocky or whatever. She's confident. She knows what she knows. Uh, but, you know, we've seen her against a competitor that she didn't know, and there was a destruction that happened with that one. I'll tell you what I think. What are you going to tell me? I <laughs> think I think that the whole thing, what you're doing, I think that you want you want to get revenge on Rachel, and you're giving her, you, you think you're giving her a path that's going to get to you in those finals. Let me stop you right there. Okay. Because I don't agree with that. All right. I think this guy, I think we're underrating Zippity Doo over here. You're going to call, well, you, you, you're going to call. Respect his name here. Right. Right. Let's respect oh, everybody in the game. His name here. is Eric okay. Zipper. Yeah. And without any further ado, here is the tale of the tape. Eric Zipper and Rachel Cushing, both strong at comic book movies. Rachel Cushing has been very strong lately at Star Trek, Star. Wars, Lord of the Rings, and also giving Mike Kalinowski the stink eye. Mm. And then you've got Eric Zipper, who again, once again, has comic book movies, Star Wars, and not liking his name disrespected by people in black suits. All, All right, well, so without any <laughs> further ado, I'm ready to get going here. Guys, are you ready to get going? Yep. I'm, I'm sitting here, aren't I? All Let's right. engage Let's, this. Then it's time for the movie trivia schmoda. <laughs> Round two matchup in the Inner Geekdom Tournament. Introducing first. Representing the world's finest. With an Inner Geekdom record of one win, no defeats. He is Super Zip Eric Zipper. Just goes with the he's music. Got, he's, got not, he's got a lot to prove here, too, because if you think how Rachel Cush is, mm -hmm. very This is a match that could set his entire career in the uh, Collider League. Absolutely. And his opponent, representing the Fight Club, with an inner geekdom record of two wins, two defeats. She is the 2017 Rookie of the Year. Rachel, the Crusher, Cruce! Oh, 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 she got look at that! 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 This is an entrance of power. This is an entrance of confidence right here. This is a great entrance. Yeah, great entrance, and, and the Fight Club having a hell of a year so far. Mark Andrew, mm -hmm. of course. Man, little, okay. Some might say that was a cocky entrance. Oh, Yo, you're going to say that? I'm just saying that. I'm just playing both. I'm giving both sides the argument. It seems sides. a little yeah. weighted on this yeah, side of turn, the table. Yeah, just turn it down a couple notches there, buddy. I think there, it's buddy. confidence. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. You have anything else to say to Zipper? I'll, uh, I'm not, Bottoms up. Cheers up, gentlemen. Well done. Let's see. Do you feel good sitting on that table? Are you thankful for being there? I felt good until she pointed a sword at me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I meant more of a thank you. That is a me, secret rule of the Schmodown. No yeah. threatening with weapons. He's, he's, he is asking for a thank you for himself. Uh, yes. Mm. Mark oh. Anopic gave me a thank you or yeah. some version of it. I was just seeing because you would not be here if not the rules have been changed. I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were asking for a thank you. 
Well, you know, if he has You're not going to get one. Oh. <laughs> I respect yeah. that. Look I respect that. that. Like that. Sir, yeah. sir, keep winning. I'll keep winning, and we'll see what happens. All right, there you go. Fair All enough. Right. All right, so Mike Kalinowski, once again, just causing absolute chaos <laughs> as we get into round number one. It's going to work like this. There's going to be ten questions in round number one. Each question is worth one point apiece. You guys are going to write your answers on the board. Make sure that you say it, point it to the camera at the same time time. Make sure also you know that you have 15 seconds to answer the question. Don't forget about your JTE rule. Do not forget about your challenge. All right, Rachel Cushing, are you ready? Ready. Zip, are you ready? Ready. Then let's get ready to schmooze out. <laughs> All right, winner of this advances to round number three. Here we go. Question one is in the realm of Star Wars. In The Phantom Menace, what was Jar Jar's response when R2 bumps into him on his way to, re to repair the Naboo, the Naboo cruiser? Christian, I know you're a big Star Wars fan. How yeah. much do you love Jar Jar on a scale of one to 10? Zero, <laughs> mm. five, mm. four, three, two, one. Pens down, Rachel. How rude? Correct, zip. I had whoopsie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I would believe that. Yeah, all I right. would believe that. Question two, the champion will ask. All right. Your second question comes from the DCEU or the DC Film Universe, whenever they decide what they're going to name it. The question is, who does Clark have a conversation with on the top of a snowy mountain in Batman v Superman? Hmm. Rachel writing down, Zip trying to find the answer. You gotta be careful. You can't fall too much in a hole against Rachel Cushing. Wearing a Five. Superman shirt. Doesn't do the Superman. Uh, can I get a repeat, please? Yes, you can. Right. First repeat there. Uh, the question is, who does Clark have a conversation with on the top of a snowy mountain in Batman v Superman? Let's gotta try to find that answer. And five. It's tough when you're up there. Four. No. Three. Two. One. Pens down, please. Zip. Lois. Incorrect. Rachel. Jonathan Kent? That's correct. That correct. Yeah. Rachel Cushing going up two points here. Two Perfect points. round so far. I think the I blocked that out. Mike Kalinowski. <laughs> Lady and gentlemen, your third question comes to you in the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The four villainous children of Thanos that make their appearance in Avengers Infinity War are also known as what collectively? A little bit of a recent release question. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, everything, if you figure that you guys have seen that movie, yeah. if you're playing in this division. Hopefully, you, if you're in this five, league, yes. you've seen them. Four, three, two, one. Rachel? The Black Order? That's correct. Wow. Zip? The Black Order. Black correct. Order. correct. Yes. Rachel Cushing has not missed a first round question in two matches. Now, we, uh, Rachel could be on her second time for a complete first round. Well, we're, th we're pretty young into this thing, but let's see. <laughs> All right, Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter is the next. Harry Potter is the next question. In the Harry Potter franchise, what is the name of the Wizarding Bank? Harry Potter's a strength of Rachel Cushing. No, it is. I think I believe that she wrote half of Harry Potter. I'm very certain she did. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Zip. Gringotts. That's correct. That's Rachel. Correct. Gringotts. Rachel had it. Wow. Rachel is, is just on fire here so far. Here's the next question. Your fifth question comes from the category of DC. What actress played Lila in 2010's Jonah Hex. Even though the actress probably would want to forget <laughs> yeah. that. Yep. Most people have forgotten that. I think movie. everyone's forgotten yeah. that. Yeah. Actors, actresses. Yeah. Five, four. Can I get a repeat? Is that the second one? Yeah. The second Certainly. one there. The question is what actress played Lila in 2010's Jonah Hex? You are disapproving of that repeat. No, I'm not. Oh, you weren't? No. I'm okay. disapproving of the movie. That's all right. No, You're reading too much into what five. I'm doing here. That's fine. <laughs> four, three, two, one. Pens down, Rachel. Megan Fox. Correct. Zip. Oh, I had Olivia Wilde. All right. Oh, so pushing wow. still up. Three Pushing's points here. Rachel playing very strong. Very strong game. All right, Mike Kalinowski. Your sixth question, competitors, comes in the category of Middle Earth. In which Middle Earth set film will you hear the following quote? A red sun rises, blood has been spilled this night. This is another franchise that Rachel is Cushing It's a strength of Rachel Cushing. She does not have many weaknesses in this league. Five. Four. Can I repeat the question? First one for yes, Rachel. Absolutely, mm. Rachel. For you, Middle Earth. In which Middle Earth set film will you hear the following quote? A red sun rises. Blood has been spilt this night. The intensity. Of these yeah, the things. silence. Yes, five, four, three, two, one, zip. Two towers? That's correct. Rachel? Two towers. Got it. Wow. Yes. 
All right, so 6-3. Rachel Cushing has Zipper needed not that question. missed. All right, here we go. Next question is your favorite category, Indeed. Star Trek. Star Trek is the next category. What species was the villain Nero? Nero. Nero, played by Eric Bana in 2009's Star Trek. Both running feverishly. Yeah. I would have lost a long time ago. Yes. <laughs> I'm never playing you. That match, even Please though do. I want to challenge you right now. No way. Five. You want your no. revenge. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. Rachel. Romulan. Correct. Zip. Romulan. Correct. Zip coming well back. Done. They know Zip staying, their Star Trek. Yeah, and Zip staying in, in, in focus here. Can here I go. say that now about Rachel being close to a perfect round? Is it closer now? you can now? say it. Now it's a little closer. Yeah, yeah, it's closer to a perfect round. All right. Your eighth question comes from the category of Marvel. Who plays Harry Osborn in the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films? Are these your favorite Spider-Man films, or do you uh, like those? I like I like the Tom Holland one. Mm, Five. I apologize. Four. <laughs> you know, these are your favorites. <laughs> yeah. Three. Third one's a disaster. <laughs> Two. One. Pens down, please. Pens down, please. And zip. James Franco, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> that is a correct answer, okay, Rachel. I'm in agreement, but it's James All right. Franco. There we go. <laughs> All right. Next. Next question here as we get to Mike. All right, yes, question nine in the category of heroes and villains. Going to give you 20 seconds to answer this one. In how many MCU films does Loki make an appearance? 20 seconds to answer this one. One of the unfortunate intergeekdom questions where you actually have to count. That yes. is a, not a strength these, of most These cases. get tough. Yeah. These are tough. I was yeah. told them there would be no math. <laughs> <laughs> and five, four, three. Repeat the question. Yep. Yes, Rachel. This will be your first one. Second. Uh, second, second, I'm sorry. Yeah. Heroes and villains. In how many MCU films does Loki make an appearance? Yeah, you have 15 seconds. The God of Mischief. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. Pens down, and we start with Rachel. Five? Correct. Yeah. Well done. Five. Zip got oh, it all correct. set. Well done. Rachel used that time the right way here, and now we get to the last question. Rachel, if you hit this, you will get a bonus question. If you don't, then we will move on. Here we go. Last question. This is mixed bag. Mixed bag. Sala appears in how many Indiana Jones films? Hmm. I love that character. I love his dates line. Oh, yeah. Bad dates. Five. Four. Call him Baloche. Three. <laughs> two. One. Pens down. Zip. Two. Correct. Rachel. Two. Got oh, it. Yeah. Perfect. Rachel wow. hits her second consecutive perfect round. Two rounds. The crowd goes nuts. Yes. Crowd goes nuts. That is 20 straight points in two first rounds for Rachel Cushing. Rachel, here we go. Actually, excuse me. That would be 21 straight points. You got the bonus in the last one. Here we go, Rachel. Your bonus question. We'll let the champ actually answer. There you go. Rachel, your bonus question is, who plays Jenny Blake, the young aspiring actress and Cliff's love interest in The Rocketeer? Jennifer Connelly. For one that more is correct. Point. Rachel Cushing going up four points over Super Zip, Eric Zipper. She is showing why she is one of the best. Round yep. number two. Now this is the round where both Mike Kalinowski and the champion will not be able to see. Here for color commentary Absolutely. only. All right, round number two works like this. The competitors will get a chance to spin the wheel. If they land on a category they do not like, they can spin it again. Of course, unless it lands on opponent's choice, then you have to take what you get. There will be four questions in this tournament. There's usually five, but there will be four this round because the Collider Collision has a lot of questions, so we're gonna keep it to four just for this particular match. The competitors have agreed. That is it, 15 seconds to answer the question. And Rachel, you have a four point lead here. Would you like to go first or second? I'd like to go first. All right, you're gonna go first. Go ahead, give it a spin, please. She's gonna command the wheel like Diana Prince commanded that sword. I like right. it. Do you have a strategy, Jace, when it comes to spinning? Do you like going first or second? No, I don't, uh, I think I think let the opponent go first. Yeah, I agree, yeah. I agree. It's interesting you give yep. him your strategy. Yeah, okay. doesn't matter. Right. I'm not afraid of that wheel. And I don't think Rachel is either. Doesn't no. look like it. But are you scared of Rachel? That's the question. Ooh, I won't admit that. <laughs> a, smart a smart competitor is. Smart. And where do we land on here as we run into... Oh, what are, oh, 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 oh! Marvel movies. Marvel movies, Rachel. Marvel movies, you're going to go for it again, or what are you going to do? 
Will she play like she did in the last match and take a thing that maybe people don't feel is her strength? Like well, Star Trek, she and then bigger, she owned it. She had a bigger lead in that match, yeah, too. Yeah, that's so. very good. Good point. Okay, Rach, got to count you down in five seconds. We got to keep Marvel. You're going to try Go again. Go for it, all guys. Right, all right. We'll see if the gods are on her side with the spin. We're going to mm. see. Rachel Cushing looks as about as confident as you can get right now. But we're going to see what will it land on. Coming back Coming around close here. to Middle Earth there. Oh. Oh. All, right. Marvel All right, Marvel <laughs> movies. Go with it. All right, so we are going to have the Marvel, Marvel movies here. Marvel movies. All right, Rachel, four questions in Marvel movies. All right. In Fantastic Four. Everyone's favorite. What is the name of the place that the Fantastic Four call home? Not the city. Multiple choice. A, Atelian. B, Star Labs. C, Baxter Building. D, Alpha Tower. C. Baxter Building is correct. That's correct. All right. Question yep. number two. In X-Men Days of Future Past, what mutant in the future timeline is able to sense when Sentinels are approaching? Sentinels. 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 Five, four, three, two. Multiple choice. Is it A, Sunspot, B, Colossus, C, Blink, D, Warpath? Warpath. Correct for one point. Yeah. Right. A minor character and she still got yeah. it. Yeah. This is a good question. Right. Question three. Who played scientist Alistar Smith in The Amazing Spider-Man 2? Five, four, three, two, one. Multiple choice. A, B.J. Novak. B, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. C, John Krasinski. D, Dan Stevens. B.J. Novak. Correct for one point. Still yes. getting every question All right. right. All right, here you go. Yeah. Very good. Very Last good question. On that one. Last question. <laughs> what actress plays the co-lead Beverly Switzler in the 1980s film Howard the Duck? <laughs> Leah Thompson? Two points. That is correct. All right. She so, spun away, but yeah, it served her well. Yeah. So Rachel Cushing has a lead here, too. I had to go to multiple choice a couple times, but now Zip goes after that round is done by Rachel. Zip, give it a good spin. How are the, sp how are the duck questions? Kind of those ones you think, is it I'm being tricked here? You yes. think you know right. it, but you got to play yeah, it safe. Yeah, sometimes you'll get one of those yeah. sample ones. Based off of Zip's shirt, I'm going to hope that he goes for DC, DC. Films. That's what it's going to look like here as we spin around. Star Wars. Oh. Star Wars. Spin Spin away. Away. Oh, possibly reveals a weakness. I would say yeah. that, that, mm. that category gets deep on yeah. this. Yeah. He's going away from Star Wars and what he's playing he, smart. He, he's Plain aiming smart. for those comic book movies for sure. I love Star Wars, not as much as Uh-oh. 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 Star, oh, Star Trek. Trek. Oh. I'm going to be oh. judging Zipper <laughs> quite harshly on this round. Yeah, he's he is. All he's, right. Yeah, he doesn't look like it's something he wanted. Does, he like does need a very strong round here. Yes. Right. Jason Imman. Not out of it by any stretch of the I got to ask, Jay, no matter how bad you want to scream the answers out here, do not. I, I, I promise not to pull a Scott Mance. All right, here <laughs> we go. Four, four questions. I love you, Scott. In Star Trek. Here we go. Star Trek. In Star Trek 2009, what is the name of the starship that George Kirk briefly commanded before perishing to save his crew? My brain is screaming out right now. Five. Multiple choice. A, USS Farragut. B, USS Bradbury. C, USS Kelvin. D, USS Intrepid. Uh, C. USS Kelvin is correct. Yeah. Correct. All right, so the, the Kelvin timeline. Yep. Yes, indeed. Uh, here we go, next question. In Star Trek, the motion picture portrayed as a living machine, Vigor? Viger. Viger considered humans to be an infestation of the Enterprise and of Earth. How did the probe refer to the humans individually? Multiple choice. A, parasites. B, carbon units. C, unknown entities. D, virus nodules. Five, four, B. three. B, carbon units is correct. There it is. That good. is correct. Okay. Wow. Nice. An next, amazing Robert Wise film. fighting. The kid's fighting. Here we go. Next question. In which Star Trek film do Riker and Troy get married? <laughs> mm. I'm the living embodiment of Riker right here. <laughs> <laughs> Five. 
Five. Four. First contact. Incorrect for the steal for two points. Nemesis. Two points steal. Correct. Two we can never steal. forget that amazing yeah. wedding in Star Trek All history. Right. So here we go. Next question is, this is number four. Number four. Final question. In Star Trek Beyond, what is the name of the bioweapon artifact Kral plans to use against the Federation? I really actually like this movie a lot. Multiple choice, though. Saving yourself from potential KO. A, the Tantalus. B, the Vinculum. C, the Kalara. D, the Abernath. You just made all those up. No, I did not. <laughs> actually, he did not. They're so uh, Can I hear those one more time? You, you can. Uh, that, is one, that, is, that is your last repeat, though. Okay. All right. A, the Tantalus. B, the Vinculum. C, the Kalara. D, the Abernath. The Tantalus. Incorrect for one steal. The Arbana. For one that point. That is correct. Oh! Rachel Ten knows point the lead. Cuts. Ten point lead. Now, she it, again, he avoided, this the, is a, he avoided the KO. He avoided the KO, but now we get to round number three. Zip's going to have to try to avoid the TKO here. Round number three, it's going to work like this. The competitors. The competitors will have to choose between one and 16. First one is worth two points. Second one is worth three. Third one is worth five points. All right, Rachel, you are in the lead from one to 16, please. Uh, seven, eight, two. Seven, eight, and two. Zip. Uh, one, five, and 14. One, five, and 14. All right. Eric Zipper cannot miss any one of these questions if he does. Rachel Cushing will advance the round number three via TKO. Your first question, Zip, is in the world of the DCEU. In Justice League, what are Steppenwolf's army of minions called? Parademons. Do you there have you two that points? Correct. All right. Staves away death. Yes. Staves away, yeah. All right. Category number five, The Hobbit. Category five <laughs> is The Hobbit. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Not very confident on this one. Who played Thorin Oakenshield, leader of the Dwarven Company in the Hobbit trilogy? Uh, Richard Armitage. Three points. Wow. Zip yes. fighting He's back. He's hanging on to life. Yes. I like back. this. And just to tie up the game here, to tie up the game and avoid the TKO, your five-pointer comes in the realm of Lord of the Rings. Oh. <laughs> the one-two <laughs> punch. A, a double good, token. The good thing is, is that he stole both those away from Rachel. That's correct. Yes. So here is your five-pointer. All right. In the Fellowship of the Ring. What was the name of the watchtower in which Aragorn and the hobbits took shelter on their way to Rivendell? Yeah. Minas Goldir? And like your winner by way of technical knockout, Rachel the Crusher! Crusher! The answer either Weathertop or Amonsul. Would have been, except look at Rachel pointing at Kalinowski. Oh, she's Rachel's coming for him. Rachel's pointing at Kalinowski, oh, but God. he's got to get past either Burnett. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, or Donica. Now, oh, yes. my God. you got to get past those guys. So Rachel Cushing has the win here, goes on to number three. Now, we are. this is not the last time we're going to see these two do battle, obviously, as the Shire Wolves and the World's Finest are going to clash. But Rachel Cushing did, I think, exactly what I think you wanted her to do here, maneuver her way into And what is that? Three. Pray tell. I know you. It seems time. like you're afraid of zipper a little bit. I'm just gonna say that. I, I see. Look, I'll, I'll pull the opposite on that. I think that my, I think Mike's trying to what he's been saying. He's, just, he's been doing it sneakily. I think he wants to. He, he believes that the that the, the older competitors, yourself, mm -hmm. him, Rachel, are the best players. So he wants to maneuver all those players to eventually clash at the end. I think Mara Kanopic's gonna have something to say about mm -hmm. that. I think that um, Adonica and and I think that um, Don't uh, sleep Lavic, uh, those yeah. guys. Yeah. I think that they all have something to say about this. So. But nonetheless, the Fife Club is on a roll here today. Are, that is absolutely. two straight victories in the Collider Collision for the Fife Club. Emma Fife's got to be pretty happy here with Rachel Cushing, as Rachel Cushing is now going into round number three. A couple steps closer to this thing right here, my man. How are you feeling watching that performance by Rachel? You know, Rachel stepped up to the plate, and she did exactly what I thought she would in this match. She's, to me been the only threat to this going away from me. So I'll tell you what, based on today's match, if Rachel eventually takes this away from me, she won't, uh, I'll be happy to give it to her if she gives a, a performance like that every single time. Well, we're gonna find out exactly how Rachel is feeling and Eric Zipper, let's go to Jen Sturger right now. What's up Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Jen Sturger here with the Five Club. I don't think you guys have stopped celebrating yet. <laughs> 
I mean, nor did we really expect to. This is a this is a strong faction. I I, I think that. We pride ourselves on not underestimating anybody. Eric Zipper played a very good match. I mean, seven points in round one is nothing to sneeze at. And, you know, Star Trek is a tough category for a lot of people in the inner geekdom. I think a lot of people would list that as being sort of their weakest category. And he really hung in there, came back fighting in round three. But, you know, Rachel's the best. So here we are. Absolutely. Rachel, that was your second straight perfect round one like Show you've got to be <laughs> you've got to be floating right now yeah kind of am winning winning has that effect on people and, and i'm not immune to that i i feel great i feel comfortable here it's the most comfortable i feel and having these guys um having my back means the world to me having two perfect first rounds means the world to me um and i will echo eric zipper strong competitor and i love that the inner geekdom is getting more and more strong competitors he's a worthy opponent um so thank you to him and i hope to see him back and i'm excited to play him uh with clark against world's finest i was just gonna say you have that yeah, match coming like up. that's that's a, gr a great um a thing to look forward to and and i expect him to bring his a game again there too rough going i mean star trek's not an easy category and um you you know, he, he fought to the end, and I always appreciate that. So now, with this whole chaos that Kalinowski's thrown us into, <laughs> you don't even know who you're facing next, but are there people in particular that you'd like to face next? Are you nervous about anyone in particular? Like I just said, I am so excited that the Inner Geekdom Tournament has uh, introduced us to new stars. I think that this is not going to be an easy run. Whoever wins this tournament is going to freaking earn it. And Mara, um, Adam, uh, you know, and, and Mike. So, I mean, the answer, I suppose, is Mike. I want Mike, because if he's going to be an architect of this kind of chaos, then uh, I'm ready for it to lead to our second one-on-one -on -one match. I mean, I'm, and, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm still in the Inner Geekdom Tournament, too. <laughs> right. <laughs> Emma, too. That's what everybody's good. Everybody and that's I advanced. I will never <laughs> Inner Geekdom unless it's me and Sam Levine. <laughs> Fair enough. There you go. <laughs> Eric? Yeah. You had yeah. absolutely nothing to be ashamed of Thank you. for that match. Thank you. You went up against arguably one of the strongest competitors in this league, and you put up seven points in round one. That's nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, and I And then proud you hit Star Trek. I think it was uh, revenge from the universe for when I made fun of Star Trek in my <laughs> match against Team Trek. I think that- The uh, wheel? The wheel remembers? I think the wheel remembers. I think the wheel knows. But uh, I feel good about it. You know, it went about how I was expecting it to go, but I feel like I put up a fight. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited to get in the ring with Rachel again against the Shirewolves. Absolutely. You, World's Finest has the match coming up against the Shirewolves. Mm -hmm. So now, what are you doing to prepare for that? Um, just, you know, watching movies. Watching movies and, you know, uh, maybe write some threatening letters <laughs> to Rachel. I don't know. We'll see. Awesome. Yeah. Well, like I said, well fought today, man. It just didn't go your way. Thank Sometimes you. Sometimes that's just how it is. Yeah, I'm so glad I got to be a part of this tournament, though. Uh, I'm not going to give Kalinowski the credit, but I'm happy I got to be involved. You know, I'm not done with Inner Geekdom. I'm not done with the Schmodown. I'm here to win. Awesome. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you. Back to you guys. What the fuck is this? Test. Look under the couch, Tom. Test, look under the couch, Tom. What the fuck is this? What the fuck? Hmm. All right. What's up, Showdown fans? Frank here, and here we go with your Showdown breakdown. And your winner! Rachel continues on her path to claim the Inner Geekdom Championship and does so in dominating fashion starting in round one. She has yet another perfect round, including the bonus. She's now done it in back-to-back -back matches. Over her Inner Geekdom career in the first round, she has answered 45 of 50 questions. That's 90% correct. And as for Eric Zipper, he hung in there with seven points, which is a two-point improvement from his last match. Into round two, Rachel lands on Marvel, and although she has to go to multiple choice three times, she comes out with five points here, and she remains perfect in the match, so far going 15 of 15. Now, Zipper somehow lands on Star Trek. That's the fifth time in nine matches this year Star Trek has been a played round two category. 
Things didn't go well for Zipper. He picks up just two points on two correct questions, and Rachel steals the other two for three points. Rachel is now four for four in steals in the tournament. Zipper had one last shot in the final round. He was able to muster up five points, but that was it as Rachel gets the TKO 19 to 14. The numbers on the match for Eric Zipper were about average. He went 11 of 17 for 65%, but looking at Rachel's performance, she had a perfect match going 17 of 17. Didn't miss one question. Combine that with her last match, she has now answered 20 straight questions correct and has a tournament accuracy rate of 94%. If you want to find out other stats about this match and from around the league, check out SD Rundown Stats on Twitter. And don't forget to check out the Schmodown Rundown every Saturday on YouTube and the Collider Factory podcast feed. This has been your Schmodown Breakdown. Here we are again. A calendar year which, to my calculations, is 365 days, correct? We won this thing last year around this time. And guess what? We kept it. Period. We are at the Schmodown Spectacular, and I couldn't be more excited. I really can't believe we are here. I had no idea how much fun <laughs> it would be and yeah. how proud I would be of where we are in the tournament and where we are in the league now. I couldn't agree with you more. And I'm going Shelly. Nice. Uh, <laughs> and Queenie. The lovely Shelly Duvall. JTE. Shelly Duvall. Sam Levine. Miss Shelly Duvall. There you go, all the way around. All right, that's all you got. Drew. Sorry, I, yeah. Drew. Uh, I'm going to go with Geppetto. It's incorrect. <laughs> JTE. <laughs> he J spelled it. JTE. Like yes. JTE. He it. JTE. Right. Whoopi Goldberg, Cheech Marin. You got one wow. point. Ooh. And nice Sam, to keep, hey, like that, Sam to keep it within three. I do not believe I have either he of those He didn't have it, so the win. Patriots catch up with JTE. Harry Levinson, two points. John Williams. Two points. Be Blackhawk down. Perfect That's round for the Patriots. 22. Could be Bernie Mac. Two points. Two points. Look at that. Three, two, one. Uh, we're going to we're gonna say Friday Night Lights. <laughs> In what Denzel Washington film will you hear the following quote? This is no democracy. It's a dictatorship. I am the law. Five, four, three, two. Training day. And your winners! And still! Yeah! 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 Trivia Schmodown! Champion of the world! Little! Three sixty-five, we've held this championship. Yeah. And I think we're going to hold it another three sixty-five. We are the greatest team that this league has ever seen. I trusted JTE, and he came out absolutely huge. We're talking about a championship match. There's a reason that you guys are at this level. That the sure. Patriots have managed to keep this belt for now an entire year. It's because you guys are the best of the best. And your winners oh. by the way of. Answer. So with that, we have a winner by way of the line, the Tyrell Corporation. The Tyrell Corporation was what we are looking for. Speaking of facing the Patriots, you yeah. guys have any strategies going into this match? We do. Uh, I have thought long and hard about what we would do if we ever had to face the Patriots again. And three weeks ago, I watched Remember the Titans on an airplane. So there's no more gaps, guys. That's it. <laughs> there's no possible way you can beat us a second time now. So I feel pretty good about that. David Lynch. Correct. Drew. Uh, that would be a man who shot part of Inland Empire in my home, David Lynch. JTE. Wow. David Lynch. And Sam. Mr. David Lynch. Everybody gets it. 2-2. Two, two. Two, two. Angela Lansbury. That's correct. Sam. Oh, he's uh, Snyder. Angela Lansbury. Drew. Angela Lansbury. That's out Landry. Oh. <laughs> so, Patriots shook here. 7-5. Michael Douglas? No, it is not. Snyder. The other one. Val Kilmer! Correct. Drew. I have Michael Douglas. And JTE. Michael Douglas. Oh, oh. so oh, ties it up. Look though. at that. Tie game. Snyder Look ties it up. Good job. Jim Caviezel. Two points. I'm Hardy. Two points. <laughs> 
Carlito's way. For two points. Answer is Django Unchained. That two points. Yep. Yep. No. Celebrity. Two points, yep. and they're back. What the is your final, final answer? answer is Johnny Depp. That is correct. Flick. From, from Sam. Still done. He got it for one point. Sam Jam. Gizmo. Two points. At uh, one point. One point. One point. Same. San Diego. 24. That's it. Drew. William Friedkin. One point. What? Just on. Fruit, fruit Bell Station. One point. All right. Wow. Wow. Four. Three. This could be it, Two. boys. Robert Duvall. And your winner! Yeah! And the new wow. Enjoying it, Drew McQueen, either wow. lending him a hand but or just congratulating him, but both. Obviously, there's an automatic rematch coming up now against the Patriots. What are your thoughts on that? Well, Drew and I knew that this might happen, yeah. that if we won, they'd get that automatic rematch. And so uh, we checked it over with the bosses upstairs, and uh, it turns out we're allowed to dictate the terms of this rematch. So we are challenging the Patriots to an Iron Man match at the Collision. That's right real winners here is probably gonna be you guys because this is gonna be Ali Frazier you're seeing two of the best teams of all time go at it they we won one they won one and let's let this third one decide it once and for all saw in that promo package what a history between these two teams starting off at the Schmodown spectacular last year the Patriots were the champions they defended against above the line the notorious uh, remember the Titans question absolutely yeah I would like to thank Johnny Loquasto and Jason Inman for proving yep. it takes two normal people to do my job and now we have the Iron Man match and Christian if you look at the Iron Man format this thing is a brutal test of not only one's movie trivia knowledge but also in Endurance, we gave one of the best matches we've ever seen when we did the Star Wars Iron Man match. What's going to happen here today? Well, I mean, that's that's exactly these these teams have so much knowledge. Look at what the Patriots did. They are nine and one. They had six title defenses. They mm -hmm. are an absolute. They were a buzzsaw in this league for a very long time. They held the title for a year and a half. Um, no other championship entity has done that. And they lost on their last question, two above the line in their last match. It was the Donald Sutherland question from the Italian job. And there has not, it has never, it's always been down to the five pointer. So above the line throughout the challenge, 30 minutes, movie trivia, who knows the most in those 30 minutes. This is going to be something. This is going to be something very special here. And I don't know if it's going to come down to the wire like the last Iron Man match did. I don't know if you and I can take it if it does. Hopefully we get a nice breezy last 10 minutes. But with the knowledge these two teams have, the competitiveness that they bring to the table, I think we're going down to the last second again. All right. Well, we're going to hear from both of these teams. Here we go. I, I got to say, uh, these are heavy belts. And every time I put them on, I always say, I need broader shoulders. I need Drew's shoulders. He should have all three of these belts on those shoulders, quite frankly. You know, there's something, I could feel it. I could smell it, I can sense it. Something going on in the air with dishonest people, dishonest ways, shady means, and their own agendas. I know what's going on and this will be dealt with. But first, I know a little a bit about Iron Man matches. I've been coaching these guys. It's a return to form for the Lion's Den. 
it is exciting to be a league champion finally, to, to get up here with the belt and to be in a, a position to defend the title. I, I really like that. I'm excited to do this today, and I feel like uh, there's an energy that comes from already having the belt on your shoulder that's kind of on I hate seeing those belts with them. It's like one of those bad movies where the kids have to be thrown away to a foster family, and that foster family, there's something off about them, something not quite right, there's something in those closets that are pretty scary. Now, I'm not scared of these guys, but we're going to beat them. We're going to beat them back. So this is the third time uh, that we are playing the Patriots. Uh, as you know, they won the first match on our final question. We won the second match on their final question. And uh, this is it, man. In baseball, this is what's known as the rubber match. This is the one for all the marbles. Last time, all the pressure was on us. This time, it's on Drew and Sam. We've got nothing to lose. We already lost the belts. Today, we're going to get them back. And you know what? We may not have ever competed in an Iron Man match. We don't care what the format is. We're coming after them, giving them everything we got. And today is going to be revenge. Anyone who doubted us, anyone who still thinks the Patriots are the greatest team of all time, they're going to know that that's just not the way it is anymore. We are going to absolutely crush them out there. I feel so confident about our skills in an Iron Man match against those two guys that it will be unquestionable at the end of the day who the real champs are. It was very interesting. Tom Dagnino, nowhere to be found in that interview. And Ken Knapsack was the one who was cutting the promo there and talking about how the, the, they are the true champions and that they're going to get the championship back. And then above the line saying this is going to be it. They're going to end it here. This is the end of the trilogy. It is done. Um, these teams do not like each other, but they also respect each other. So we're looking for a battle here. Yeah, it, this is going to be an exciting stuff. And when you look at the intros and all this hubbub, you wonder if they're going to come out and do the normal fanfare that the Patriots are known for, or are they going to be conserving their energy? 30 minutes, look, if it's an episode of ALF, it goes by like that, but 30 minutes, it can be a lifetime when you're up under the white hot spotlight of the movie, Trivia, a Schmodown. All right, here we go. Here is the tale of the tape. You've got the challengers, the Patriots. They've got Arnie Sly, Tarantino movies, and not sleeping because they want their championship back. It's a skill, actually. Are those Arnie, Sly, and Tarantino movies? All they all three. did a flick together? Like, well, they do. Is that I'll a go, skate plan? I'll go see it. And then above the line, 70s, 80s, and making sure the rules go how they <laughs> want them to go because Sam Levine wants to write the rule book. <laughs> Thank right, you, Jim. All right, so and now we are ready to go. The Iron Man match. You Hot ready? Damn. Oh, I, I'm ready. Is the crowd ready? <laughs> and, and ladies yes. and gentlemen, it is time for the movie trivia schmoda. Love you. Love you. Love you. 30 minutes for the movie trivia schmodown team championship of the world. Introducing first, with a record of nine wins, one defeat, and four knockouts, they are the 2016 and 17 Team of the Year and the former Movie Trivia Schmodown Team Champions representing the Lions Den, the Ian Snyder, Jeff Snyder, Little Evil, JTE, the Patriots. Yeah. 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 And again, Ken Napsa. Oh, there he is. What is this guy wearing? He showed up. Look, it's so weird. It's a 1970s pool party. So weird to see them without the belts. Yeah, and no Patriots jersey either. They always no, got a big classic Patriots shirt. They have a little belt. tiny belt. Yeah. An iron, I get it. He brought out an he iron. Back, the look. first time Jeff Snyder's wielded an iron True. in his life. Give me what I do. I enjoy it. So you get the page. first time in a long time that they've come out first and without the title. Very weird to see a strange, strange sight. That's right. And they brought out an iron and a tire iron. I don't know if they did it because it's an Iron Man match or they're just selling those items yeah. after the program. It could become a cage match, Ellis. Yeah. We're prepared. And their opponents. With a record of six wins, one defeat, and three knockouts. They are the 2017 Ultimate Schmodown winners, 2017 Rookie Team of the Year, and the reigning, defending, movie trivia Schmodown champions of the world, the Godfather, Drew McQueenie, and the movie trivia Schmodown singles champion, the glorious one, Sam Levine. Come on! Come on! Who are the champs? Look at that. Arm the belts. How are you still talking? It's hard. 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 
still talk. They come out adorned with the real belt. Showing them the belt, the real no belt. Tire irons or houseware appliances for them, it is all about the belt yep. above the line. It is an absolute, this is, it is a it's kind of a surreal sight here. Look at all the belts. Some of the belts that used to be owned on the other side of the table, and now we have the Patriots. Will they bring back the greatness of Belichick and Brady, or will above the line drop kick these Murphys? All right, so <laughs> Iron Man match. 30 minutes of trivia. Mark, the rules are not the same for a five-round man, five round title fight. How does it work? Ah, well, let's see if I can dust off the old Iron Man rule book here in the Iron Man matchup. 30 minutes are displayed on the clock. That is a continuous clock until we get down to two minutes. The way it plays out is as soon as the first question in the match is asked, the clock starts. The clock will continue to run all the way down to two minutes. We're going to ask you a question just about every 20 seconds. We ask the question, you have 20 seconds, not the normal 15 seconds. The reason for the extra time is so that the teams can confer, preferably as far away from the microphone as possible. There is one whiteboard per team. So you should probably designate one team member or the other one to be the writer. I'm not looking at you, JT. I'm just saying <laughs> to be the writer of the answer. Can I nominate JTE to be the writer? <laughs> Unfortunately, this is, is not an opponent's choice for your, for your team? situation. Sure. <laughs> so you guys hear the question asked. It, it'll play out just like a normal round one question. We ask the question. You write down your best attempt at an answer. You are allowed to confer with your teammate for each and every question we ask all the way up until two minutes left to go. You're going to have 20 seconds, and when we say pens down, we're going to go to you. When we ask you for your answer, please show what you wrote down to the camera at the same time you verbalize it in the microphone. Now, before we get to that two-minute warning, we have granted each one of you guys a timeout and a challenge. If you issue a challenge and like the ruling of a particular question, we will confer here with the judge, and we will give you our ruling as quickly as possible. If you need to use your timeout, you can do so in between questions, meaning you call a timeout, you get one minute to just breathe. It's going to be a long match. Clock Gentlemen, will still, and you still kill the clock with that minute. That's right. You cannot use your timeout if we are under five minutes in the match, just so you know. Now, once we get to the two-minute warning, that's when the buzzers come out, and it is speed round. Every person for themselves, every point you get helps your team. If you miss a question in the speed round, you lose a point for your team. Any competitors have any questions before we get going I here? I actually do. When you said with the timeouts, the clock stops when you call timeout, no? no? It, it, you, can, you can basically burn a minute so off the clock. we can essentially, okay. If you, wanted to start, if you wanted to call a timeout when the match starts, it'll start at 29 as opposed to 30. If you want to be a, a dick. No, you can do it, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just to take, it's to take a rest. You know I never want to be. I just can't help it, Ellis. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I also have a question. Sure. Uh, Snyder, when you're done with that little mini belt, can I have it? Because that one would actually fit me. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, they're making friends up here, Christian. This will be fun. It looks like it. Uh, okay. We'll trade right now. <laughs> All right. So, with that being said, the challengers, are you ready? Yes. Yes. The champions, are you ready? You sure are. Yep. Then it's time for the movie trivia schmoda. Let's get ready to schmoda. <laughs> All right. I changed it up a little bit. All right. Here we go. It's the Iron Man match. You yep. got to. All right, and the clock will start now. Question one, who directed 1983's Videodrome? I liked when you said, are the challengers ready? And the Patriots didn't realize they were the challengers because they're, they're so used to hearing That's so true. Yeah, as they get ready. This gives us Five, extra time to vamp. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Snyder. David Cronenberg. That is correct. Above the line. That would be David Cronenberg. Next question. Your next question. What film stars Gene Wilder, Terry Garr, and Madeline Kahn? One. This is, I don't think we need to vamp during every question. You know, I don't think so. We can, can we call timeouts from vamp? <laughs> and five, four, three, two, one. Above the line. Young Frankenstein. Got it. Young Frankenstein. Got it. All right, next question. Tarantino. Minnie is the name of the woman who owns the haberdashery in what film? I, I Minnie, it, Minnie, Minnie is the name of the woman who owns the haberdashery in what film? Did that count as a repeat? No. Five. There are no repeats. Four. Three. Two. One. No. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, Patriots. The Hateful Eight. Got it. Above the line. The Hateful Eight. Yep. All right. Next Woo! question. Name the biopic directed by Martin Scorsese in the, f in the year 1980. Five. 
five, four, three, two, one. Pens down and Patriots. Oh, we just went first oh, again, but okay. Raging Bull. Okay, yes. Raging Bull. Got it. Okay, next question. Who directed the 2008 film Hunger, starring Michael Fassbender? Each team perfect through four. Yep. They're making our lives very easy right now. So far, probably will not continue. Five, four, three, two, one. Above the line. Uh, that would be Steve McQueen. Patriots. Steve McQueen. Next question. In 1951's Disney's Alice in Wonderland, the queen orders the playing cards to paint the roses what color? Five, four, three, two, one. Patriots. Red? Correct. Ooh. Above one. Oh, OK. We had white. Oh, all right. So then Pat's got it. Six, five. Next question. All right. So Bill and Ted use what snack to lure Genghis Khan into their time machine in Bill and Ted's excellent adventure? <laughs> Stumped him with a Bill and Ted. Yeah, looks like it. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, above the line. Uh, we have Twinkie. Correct. Patriots. Doritos. All right, ties it back up. All right, All next right. question. Your next question. Fred Zinneman directed Burt Lancaster, Montgomery Clift, and Deborah Kerr in what 1950s World War II film? I like going back to the 50s. Cut the tension with you now. <laughs> it's been a long day for Five, this crap. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. Patriots. Bridge on River Kwai. Incorrect. Yeah. Above line. From here to eternity. Correct. <laughs> Next question. All right. Who stars opposite Jennifer Garner as grown-up Matt in the 2004 film 13 Going on 30? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down and above the line. Uh, that would be Mark Ruffalo. Correct. Pages. Mark Ruffalo. Got it. Okay. All right, in the 2013 film World War Z, Brad Pitt is a former UN investigator fighting off what sort of monster? Just making sure the crowd's awake here. Five, five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please, Patriots. Zombie? Correct. Zombies. Zombies. Got it, all right. Shirley MacLaine and Jack Lemmon starred in this 1960 film directed by Billy Wilder. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And above the line. The apartment. The apartment. Um, the apartment. Yeah, What's correct. it say? What, what's it say? The apartment. apartment. We crossed this off. Okay, I got it. They got it. They got it. Patriots. That's fair. They got it. Patriots. Some like a hut. Incorrect. All right. Next question. Your next question is: Scary. What composer did the scores for the following movies: Thor, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, and Brave? Cut the tension with a knife. Or even a spoon, to yeah. quote Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. And Patriots. Didn't Brian have... Tyler? No, above the line. <laughs> no, that's, that's who we had, Brian answer. Tyler. All right, next question. <laughs> what, what was the answer? Uh, it was uh, Patrick Doyle. Next question. All right. Mm. Who played Dr. Sam Loomis in 1978's Halloween? Get drunk Five, four, three, two. Is that the answer? One. All right. Pens down, please. And Patriots. Donald Pleasance. That's correct. Donald, Donald Pleasance. Got it. Next question. What color of ball indicates a premeditated murder in Minority Report? Thankful the crowd held it together on that one. Yeah. Odd start to a question. Five, four, three, two. One, pens down, and above the line. Red. Red ball. Correct, Patriots. Red. Got it, all right. For 2000 Academy Awards, Steven Soderbergh received 
Best Director nominations for two different movies. Name them. This is our 15th question of the match. Yep. Coming up on five, three minutes left to go. Four, three, two, one. Patriots. Traffic and Aaron Brockovich. Correct. That would be Traffic and Aaron Brockovich. Got it. All right, next one. Your next question. What 1988 mystery thriller stars Harrison Ford as a jet-lagged man in Paris searching for his missing wife? Harrison Ford, you can currently see him in theaters Five, in Solo, a Star Wars Four, film. he's not in that movie. Three, <laughs> two, one. Pens down, please, and above the line. Uh, that would be Frantic. Frantic. Correct, Patriots. Frantic. Got it. All right. This actress played opposite Ray Milland in Hitchcock's Dial M for Murder. Harrison Ford getting frantic. I don't know, I think. Five, four, three, two, one. Pence down. And Patriots. Vera Miles. Incorrect. Grace Kelly. Correct. It is, in fact, Grace Kelly. Your next question. Fuck. In the movie Full Metal Jacket, what nickname is given to Vincent D'Onofrio's Private Lawrence? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, above the line. Private, Private pile. pile. Correct. Patriots. Patriots. D didn't happen. Homer. All right, next one. Homer. Is that a nickname? Tom, Tom Hanks nickname. starred in two films in 2013 where he portrayed a non-fictional person. Name one of the two films. Tom Hanks starred in two films in 2013 where he portrayed a non-fictional person. Name one of the two films. Four point lead. But as we know, one five. That speed round. Four. Anything can happen. Three. Two. One. Pens down. Patriots. Saving Mr. Banks. That's correct. Above one. Captain Phillips. Correct. I'm the captain Both now. Correct answer. Your next question, number 20 of the match. Natalie Portman starred opposite Zach Braff and Peter Sarsgaard in this 2004 movie. Five. Four, three, two, one, above the line. Ah, uh, that'd be Garden State. Correct, Garden Patriots. State. Got it. In Ferris Bueller's Day Off, what is the name of the principal's assistant? Five, mm -hmm. four, three, two, one. Pens down, uh, Patriots. No, Didn't have it. Grace! Correct. Show us. All right. Show us. Show us. Show us. Show us. Oh, Grace. Okay. I'm sorry. Grace. All right. Okay. Next, next question. Next question. Here we go. All right. I got it. In Avengers, in Avengers Infinity, Infinity War, what movie does Peter Parker reference to Tony Stark before ejecting Ebony Maw into space? We hope everybody at home has seen the movie Avengers Infinity War. Five, four, three, two, one. And above the line. Uh, that'd be aliens. Correct, Patriots. Aliens. Got it. Oh, uh, wait, 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 Turn wait. Around. wait. Turn around. Let me see it. That no. is incorrect. Incorrect. No good. Incorrect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's no good. We are now. Right, next question. Under 20 minutes to go in the match. Neither team has used the timeout. Here we go. Next question. Wow. What film did Christopher Nolan direct before Batman Begins? We need one of the movies. Yeah. Well, you don't want to do that one. All right. Okay, fine. Five, four, three, two, one. And Patriots. Insomnia. Correct. Insomnia. Got it. All right. Next question. Which superhero television actress played the love interest of Miles Teller in the film Whiplash? This is when your brain starts playing Five, tricks on you a little bit. Yeah. Four. Three, two, one. Above the line. Uh, Melissa Benoit. Correct. Uh, yeah. Patriots. Melissa Benoit. Wait, let me see how you play. Benoit. Okay. Benoit? You have Benoit. N-O-I-T. It's, oh, it's uh, N-O-I-S-T. It's S-T. That is incorrect on the, on, on oh, above okay. the line. All right. So, there, so no, no point for above the line. Okay. Okay. 21 to 16. Our next question. How many Academy Awards has Meryl Streep won in her career? <laughs> Crowd handled that very well. Mm -hmm. Five, four, three, two, one. Patriots. 
Three? Correct. Mm. Above oh. the line. I missed two. Missed it. Okay, Patriots get it. All right, next question. Missed their last two above the line. Who plays, who plays Minister Mason, Minister Wilford's right hand in 2013's Snowpiercer? I don't know if it's me. Are the questions starting to get ratcheted up a notch? This is intense. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Above the line. Uh, Tilda Swinton. Swinton. Correct. Yeah. Patriots. Yeah, William, William Hurt. All right. William Hurt, All right. Next question. All right. Still a five-point like, game. Your next question is, who plays lead psychiatrist Dr. John Cawley in the movie Shutter Island? Boy, it's kind of going back and forth. It is. Five. Trial of error, the last Four. Few three. Two. One. Pens down. Pens down. Patriots. Ben Kingsley. Correct. Yeah, we don't have it. Didn't have it. All right, Patriots, go up. Back and forth. Next question. What 1967 musical was remade as an Eddie Murphy comedy in 1998? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Above the line. Uh, that would be Dr. Doolittle. Correct. Patriots didn't have it. All right. Back Next and question. forth. All right. Dr. Doolittle. What 2013 film starring Daniel Radcliffe and Dane DeHaan told the story of the great poets of the best generation? Beat Alan, generation. Beat generation. Allen Ginsberg, William Burroughs, and Jack Kerouac. Can't really say best generation. Sorry. They were it's a, a long generation. day. Long day. Five, four, three. Two, one, Patriots. Kill your darlings. Correct. Above the line. Oh, nope. Didn't have it. All right. Next question. Your next question is, what James Bond movie saw Javier Bardem play the main antagonist? All different corners of the movie trivia globe. Five, four, three, two, one. Above the line. Uh, that'd be Skyfall. Correct. Skyfall. Got it. All right. A 16-year-old girl who was raised by her father to be the perfect assassin is being tracked by a by an intelligence agent played by Kate Blanchett in which film? Five, four, three, two, one. Patriots. Hannah. Correct. Above the line. Hannah. Got it. All right. Your next question. Who played British Captain James Conrad in Kong Skull Island? Five, four, three, two, one. Above the line. I didn't have it. Patriots. Yeah. Didn't have it. Didn't have it. It was Tom Hiddleston. Tom, Tom Hiddleston. Hiddleston. All right, here we go. Pat uh, all right, here we go. Next question. Next question. What is the name of the U.S. Marshal played by both John Wayne and Jeff Bridges in their respective True Grit films? Full name, please. First and last name. Five. Four, three, two, one. Patriots. Rooster Cogburn. Correct. Yeah. Rooster Cogburn. Got it. His middle name is Teeth. Your next question. <laughs> Who plays Cook and Petty Officer Second Class Dory Miller in the Michael Bay movie Pearl Harbor? Still a great trailer. Yeah. That both Pearl teams have trailer. their timeouts and have not used it yet. And uh, their challenges both have. Five, yeah. four, three. Two, one. Above the line. Uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. Correct. Patriots. Cuba Gooding Jr. Ooh, right. Good, good. What, both of them. What movie directed by John Sales details the 1919 Chicago White Sox or Black Sox as they were called? No, I know this one. I know you know this one. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Patriots. Eight men out. Correct. Above the line. Eight men out. Your next question. This holiday classic stars Bing Crosby, Danny Kaye, Vera Ellen, and Rosemary Clooney. What is the title? Five, four, three, two, one. Patriots. White Christmas? Correct. Love the line. White Christmas. Got White it. Christmas. Who directed, the, who directed the film Coming to America starring Eddie Murphy? Four-point game right now. We are yep. under 15 minutes to play. Yep. I wonder if McGuinney and Snyder are getting tired of writing the answer. I don't know. Five, four, three, two, one. Above the line. Uh, that would John be John Landis. John Landis. Correct. Patience. John Landis. Got it. All right. 
Your next question, in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, on his quest to find clues regarding the Grail's location, Indy enters a crypt by bursting through the floor of what kind of establishment? Five, four, three, two, one, and Patriots. Bank. Incorrect. Library. Correct. First, okay, next question. I need money. According to Tigger, what is the world's most wonderful thing about Tiggers? Is this sneaking? Yeah. Five, <laughs> four, three. Two, no, no idea. one, above the line. Uh, that he's, he's the, the only one. one. Correct. Yeah. Patriots didn't Let's happen. Let's go to the next All question. Right. <laughs> All right. All right. What? Go ahead. What movie did Matthew McConaughey win his Oscar for? You know, with the Winnie the Pooh question, you really, you can really tell who the dad on the uh, on the set is. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Patriots. Dallas Buyers Club. Correct. Dallas Buyers Club. Got it. All right, next question here. In, in Liar Liar, what was Carrie's last confession to the cop when he was asked if there was anything else after being pulled over? It would be changed my life. We have a six-point game in favor of the the line. Five. Under 12 to play. Four. Three. Two, one, above the line. Ah, I have unpaid parking, parking tickets. tickets. Correct. You guys, the Patriots didn't I have it. it. Didn't I have it. it but Patriots didn't done. have it. All right, here we go. Your next question. Angelina Jolie stars alongside Liev Schreiber and Shivatel Ejiofor in what action thriller? I'm, I think I probably would be at like 21, maybe? Five. I don't know. Four. Three. You and I both? Two. One. Patriots. Salt. Got it. Above the line. Salt. Wow, not mixed. Uh, next question. Great condiment. What was the title of the third Narnia film? <laughs> the deep cut reverberating throughout the crowd. Both have not used their timeouts yet. Or their challenges. Minutes. Five, nope, that's his four, I was three, okay. two, one. Pens down above the line. Uh, that would be Prince Caspian? Incorrect. The hey. Voyage of the Don Treater. That's correct. Oh. All right. The second one. Next one. Right. Here we go. Your next question. I never got that. In the movie The Social Network, other than his name, company name, and contact information, what does Mark Zuckerberg have on his business card? What is written on his business card? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Patriots. I'm CEO, bitch. Yep. Wow. Line. No, didn't have it. Didn't okay. have it. That's a big. Right. That's a big gap Next close. One. We're gonna take a timeout. Time out. Yep. All right, so they're going to burn the clock All here. Right. They have, they have we one get a minute chance to, burn the to clock. decompress a little bit. It's a five-point yeah, game now. So when we when we yeah. rejoin the action, it's going to be about nine and a half, a little over nine and a half minutes um, left in the match. A five-point game, and maybe above the line using that timeout because the Patriots narrowed the gap a little bit. Feeling fatigue, smart usage of the timeout in my eyes by above the line. Ten thirty-five. All right, 10.35. Coming back in 20 seconds. 20 Coming back seconds. in 20. Starting the next question in 15 seconds. 15 seconds. Tom Dagnino retires to a 1974 pool. <laughs> Guys, I hate, to, I hate to have to ask, what? but there's a little bit of like chatter over the first words of every next question they're asking. Yeah. And it's really hard, and I don't want to make them repeat it, so I hate to be that guy, but. What? Sam Levine played, has ruined the party. Who played, <laughs> I, I can't, I can't, I, can't I, I, don't, I don't know what you said. Who, who played Thelma and Louise in Thelma and Louise? I don't know what he means with the shadow thing. I think it's just a request of the audience to yeah. get excited, and then maybe you and I take just a little bit of a beat, and we let the audience quiet down. Five, the next question. four, three, two, one. Pens down, above the line. That would be Susan Sarandon and Gina Davis. You got a Patriots. Gina Davis, Susan Sarandon? All right, That's next right. Question. We did not need these specific characters in the question. No. In Roman J. Israel Esquire, what actor plays cutthroat attorney George Pierce? Five. Four, no. three, two, one. Pens down. Patriots. Colin Farrell. Got it. Above the line. Didn't yeah, have it. Nope. Okay. What 90s comedy features a topless psychic with a third nipple? What did you just say? What 90s comedy features a topless psychic with a third nipple? It's a four-point game. Five, four, put it down. three, put it down. Put it down. two, one. Pens down. Above the line. 
Total Recall. No. Incorrect. All rats. Yeah. That is correct. Oh, yes. All right. For All right. Oh, Your next right. question. A fig nibble. Go. What legendary Hollywood director directed the 1932 version of Scarface? Five, four, three, two, one. Patriots. Howard Hawks. Correct. Howard Hawks. Got it. What 2017 Steven Soderbergh film starred Channing Tatum, Adam Driver, and Riley Koo? Five, four, three, two, one. Above the line. That'd be Logan Lucky. Correct. Patriots. Logan Lucky. All right, next question. Tim Burton directed Mark Wahlberg in what film? It's a three-point game right now. Yep. The Patriots have halved the deficit they had just a couple minutes ago. They still have not used their timeout. No. Five, four, three, two, one. Patriots. Planet of the Apes. Correct. Planet of the Apes. Right. This Golden Age star was the first actress to win an Academy Award, a Golden Globe, and a BAFTA Award for a single performance. Who is she? Just need the, the actress. actress, not the name of the movie. If you want to show off, have at it. Five, four, three, two, one. Pence down, above the line. Joan Crawford? Incorrect. Catherine Hepburn. No, it Audrey, Audrey. Hepburn. Audrey oh. Hepburn. Hepburn. All right. All right. Still a three-point lead oh, under go, seven go, minutes go, to go, play. Go ask him. What 80s comedy had the tagline, a tale of murder, lust, greed, revenge, and seafood? It's a reminder, after the five minutes, the timeout from the Patriots will be gone. Five, four. Three, two, one. Pens down. Patriots. Blood simple. Incorrect. A fish called one. Correct. Four point game. All right. All right. What year was Groundhog Day released? Five, four, three, two, one. Above the line. The year of our Lord, 1993. Correct. Patriots. 1993. Got it. All right. Pixar. Who does the voice for the legendary adventurer Charles Muntz in the movie Up? Five, four, three, two, one. Patriots. Kirk Douglas. Incorrect. Christopher Plummer. Correct. Oh, All right. Nice. Next Under question. A minute until in the can in be Men used. in Black, who plays Agent Zed, the head of MIB and J and K's superior? Five, four, three, Five point game. two, one. Above the line. Uh, that'd be Rip Torn. Correct. Rip Torn. Got it. Next question. One of Charlize Theron's first roles was a supporting one in this music film, written and directed by Tom Hanks. Five, four, three, two, one. Patriots. That thing you do. Correct. Above the line. We that did it correctly with the exclamation <laughs> point. That's, that's great. We accept it either who, way. This, so Patriots have 10 seconds. They want to use their timeout. Who, yep. who plays the villainous T-1000 in Terminator 2? So the timeout's going to have come and gone. They're going to be gone in two seconds. Your Patriots have lost their ability for time. Three minutes from now, we will begin the lightning. Five, four, three, two, one. Above the line. That'd be Robert Patrick. Right. Robert Patrick. Got it. All right. Your next question. In the movie Spaceballs, what does the bumper sticker say on the back of Lone Star's ship? Got to have a Spaceballs question. Five, four, three, two, one. Patriots. We break for no one? Uh, above nope. the line. No. It was I love Uranus. Who doesn't love Uranus? Uh, All right. <laughs> Next question here. Who played the iconic character of Jacques Clouseau in 1963's The Pink Panther? Who plays the character of Inspector Jacques Clouseau in 1963's The Pink Panther? Five, four, three, two, one. Above the line. Uh, that would be Peter Sellers. And Peter, Peter Sellers. Okay. Two minutes to the lightning round. It is a five-point game in favor of Above the Line. Harry Connick Jr. wooed this actress in the 1998 film, Hope Floats. Patriots hanging in there. They could have folded. It's only a five point. You know? and anything can happen. Five, in the last two four, minutes. three, two, one. Patriots. Sandra Bullock. Correct, above the line. Sandra Bullock. 
who played Michael Douglas's patient that he must convince to help him get his daughter back in the action thriller Don't Say a Word? Five, four, three, two, one, above the line. A hey, mad love for Brittany Murphy. Correct, Patriots. Brittany Murphy. Next question. What actor plays movie producer Les Grossman's right-hand man in the movie Tropic Thunder? Bit of a uh, rope it up there. Yeah, a little bit. I like it. Five, four, three, two, one. Patriots. Bill Hader. Correct. Above the Bill line. Hader. What a deep pull. Wow. Who, who directed the 2016 film The Nice Guys? Yeah. I'll look at you for that one. You know. Five. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. Above the line. Uh, that would be Shane Black. Correct. Shane Black. Got it. Still a five-point game. Kevin Smith starred opposite Jennifer Garner and Timothy Oliphant in this 2007 romantic comedy about a woman who seeks comfort in his friends when her fiancé dies. So I can probably get one more question yeah. off before we Five. Can we repeat the question? Yeah, can I can do that. that Kevin Smith starred opposite Jennifer Garner and Timothy Oliphant in this 2007 romantic comedy about a woman who seeks comfort in his friends when her fiance dies. Five, four, three, two, one. Patriots. No, I didn't have it above the line. No. Failure to launch? That is incorrect. Catch, Catch and release. release. And, and with that, one. now we go to the speed two round. Two minutes. All right, so we're going to reset the wow. clock. It's two minutes here. So we're going to two minutes. Two mi okay. Everybody take a breath. All right, two minutes, two minutes. So the speed round, the buzzers, the buzzers will come out. Yeah, so the buzzer is going to come out here, Christian, as we uh, would ask the competitors not to talk right into the microphone because we're going to recap the action up here for everybody at home and the studio audience kind enough to join us here today. Two minutes left, Christian. Mm -hmm. um, it's a five-point game. Yeah. Uh, we saw some ebbs and flows, some back and forth. At one point above the line had, I believe, the largest lead of the match was six points. The Patriots were able to cut that all the way to three late in the game, and then above the line coming back. Five-point lead, but as we saw with the Star Wars match between Ken Knapsack and Sam Whitworth, anything, anything is possible. It's going to come fast and furious in the last two minutes. Yes, and I want to make sure that the competitors know this. I, all four of the competitors, make sure that you know this. If it is winding down, and the question is asked before the time runs out, and the time runs out afterwards, and you answer, it will still count. For example, so if, if I get the question off within two seconds left, time runs out, but you answer it, it will still count. If the question starts before time Co runs correct. out. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Just yeah. so everybody knows. A lot like a play in football. The clock can expire during the play, and the play still stands. All right. I'm going to ask, hang on. I'm going to ask the crowd here to please uh, be as quiet as possible for the next two minutes. Trust me, you will want to explode after these two minutes are up because it is about to get very, very tense. We're going to do a quick test of the buzzers, and then we'll be right back. All right, here we go, guys. A speed, speed round. <clears throat> All right. Who played the station inspector in Hugo? Drew McQueenie. Uh, that would be Sasha Baron Cohen. Correct. Allison Lohman and Justin Longstar in what Sam Raimi films? Sam Levine. Uh, drag Me to Hell. Correct. In the movie Pretty Woman, what toiletry item does Richard Gere's character mistake for cocaine? It's Jeff Snyder. Baby powder. Incorrect. Dental floss. One point loss. Eight point game. In the spy comedy Undercover Brother, who played the assassin named White She-Devil? Drew McQueen. Denise Richards. Correct. <laughs> Who plays Jack Nicholson's co-lead Evelyn Cross Mulray in Chinatown? Just not. Faye Dunaway. Correct. Who wrote and performed the title song for the 1985 movie Spies Like Us? Drew Paul McQueen. McCartney. Correct. Robin Williams starred opposite Cuba Gooding Jr. in this 1998 Academy Award winning drama. Five, four, three, no, two. One, okay. Who played, it was What Dreams May Come. Who played one, one the left. dual role of Lieutenant, Lieutenant Stephen Bull McCaffrey and Captain Dennis McCaffrey in the 1991 film Backdraft? Who played the dual roles? JT. Kurt Russell. Correct. In Inception, who plays the newest member of Cobb's crew, Adrian, who specializes? JT. Juno. Uh, what's her name? Ellen Page. So it's within two, it's within two, two seconds. seconds. All right. Oh. Within Reese, two seconds, yeah. Reese Witherspoon, Mark Ruffalo, and John Heater starred in this 2005 romantic comedy. Sam Levine. Just like heaven. Correct. Who directed the 1966 version of Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451? Drew McQueen. Francois Truffaut. Yes. Who plays Thor's mother in the MCU? JT. Yes. What actress plays Ricky Bobby's original wife in Talladega Nights? JT. 
Uh, that would be, oh, two, it's two, that's two eight. One point <laughs> loss. Who directed Kate Winslet and Josh Brolin in the movie Labor Day? Yeah. Jason Reitman. An aging group of outlaws look for one last big score in the traditional American West is disappearing around them in what Sam Peckinpah Western? Jeremy Queenie. Your the Wild Bunch. And your winner! Yeah! 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 I woke up. <laughs> wow, look at that. They retained the title. Oh my and some heart medication Woo. for Drew. I'm worried. 57-48 yes. wow. is the final here. The Patriots playing one hell of a match, but above the line, clearly uh, more tense than they were letting on, as you can yeah. tell by that energy yeah. expulsion. Uh, it, it's another great Iron Man match. Well, the Patriots are done. I mean, it looks like right there, they, they didn't get a chance to do it, and the above the line have defended the championship, and now they will play the the winner of that's right the shire wolves and world's finest whoever wins that match will get a shot at the still champions above the line oh my god i mean that was that was everything you wanted it to be back and forth we went in that speed round sam and drew just took it home look five point game going into the speed round right as we reset everything the buzzers come out and you can see jt and snyder licking their chops this is their chance to put in overdrive the above the line squad opening with a couple early uh speed round points and then for, to their credit the patriots started throwing i think the haymaker i think the knockout punch was drew mcweeney answering francois Truffaut right. for the fahrenheit 451 question yeah. Now Jen Sturger is there with the still champions above the line and the unfortunate losers today, the Patriots. What's up, guys? I'm here with Above the Line. Congratulations, guys. That was exhilarating and nerve-wracking to watch. I'm sure you guys are feeling the same way. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Drew's face at the end said it all in terms of excitement, but I, I felt really uh, happy that we got to play an Iron Man match because for better or worse now, I, I keep getting to do things I haven't gotten to do. My last singles match was my first time in Sudden Death. I love the format of the Iron Man match, so I was very anxious to play this one. And, uh, I mean, like I said, this guy right here, his face at the end said it all. I mean, you lit up like a Christmas tree, and that is no exaggeration. How are you feeling after this? Uh, I, uh, I need a nap. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I, it's funny. I, I've, I've heard that I have... Um, either not realized we've won a match uh, when everybody else in the room did or that I haven't been very demonstrative and uh, I think I really wanted it today because <laughs> I surprised myself too. How are you feeling about the format? Were you a little nervous Loved it? Loved it. Loved the format but it is nerve-wracking and I, I told Sam there's a point because it's all adrenaline because you're just answering one question after another after another and I, I realized at a certain point my stomach was starting to hurt just from the sheer focus of it and yeah, it's, it's a great feeling when you finish. And now... I don't even know what's next. I mean, you defeated the Patriots twice, and where do we go from here? I think we bask is what we do right now. We sit here and we bask. We beat the unbeatable team of the Schmodown twice in a row in the most definitive which team knows more about movies manner. And, uh, and right now, I think Drew and I are going to uh, uh, bask in this glow for a little bit before we figure out what's next. Um, as for me, uh, there's a lot I want to talk about, but I don't think now is the time. So I have uh, an announcement of sorts that I want to make, but not here. So I'm going to do it on Tuesday. Uh, so everyone who's watching this, come back on Tuesday and, and see what's next. Thank you so much, guys. Congratulations. Thank you so much. <sighs> so I'm here with the Patriots, guys. Lion's Den. I know that match didn't go quite the way you guys were expecting it to. I mean, this has got to feel pretty devastating to you guys Well, with losing two in a row. Expected, uh, kind of, because here's the thing. Their strongest, I think, round is the speed round. And if you're going to build a championship match where the last two minutes is just speed round, it's a little bit of a handicap. That's like if the last round is all Stallone questions and we both have to answer. I'm probably going to know more than they do. So, But here's the thing I really noticed. The second they won, I saw a motion coming out of Drew I've never seen before. The last time I saw anything close to that is I think maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago when I won the belt. And today, if I won, I would have just been like, okay, this, a new car is only a new car when you first get it. Eventually, it's just an old beat-up car. I was a champion for almost two years. 
having that thing is it became kind of nothing to me i guess and to see drew's reaction like he needed this he wanted it more than me but i think that's what happens with greatness if you're the great long enough greatness just feels normal and jeff how are you feeling i'm feeling fine you know i took the last loss pretty tough the truth is none of this would even happen if it wasn't for the italian job like we wouldn't even be here playing an iron man match uh, listen, they, they, were, they came to play today. It's very hard to come up with questions that are going to stump both McWeeny and Levine, you know? Uh, they knew their classics. We, we fumbled on some of those. I would have loved to have taken Vera Miles back and said Grace Kelly or, or taken some like it hot back and said the apartment. So uh, we're going to have to li live with those. But every t it's, it seemed, just seemed like every time we made a run, you know, they did just enough to hold us off. And then by the time we were down five heading into the speed round, our, our fate was kind of all but sealed. Um, yeah, I just really, again, the speed round. Really, Sam's strongest category, you're just going to let him have that for two minutes. If this was a regular match, like the first two, which they barely won the second, I really do think we would have been champs again. Yeah. I just like, I would have liked more horror, thriller, things, crime, drama. Like, I missed some of the categories. It just felt like a lot of the questions were geared toward old stuff that McWeeny w was really, like, you know, good at. And I'm sure you have something to add to this. Well, you know, there's people who think they know stuff and there's people who actually do know stuff. And then there is actually morons who know nothing. And I think that above the line are the, the latter. What? Yeah, that's what I think. What? Jennifer, Jennifer, yeah, sure, may, may I borrow your microphone, Jennifer? Oh, Once what? again, the consummate professional. Oh, he's the best. Here. I have been waiting for a long time. We shouldn't even be talking about this match. We didn't need, what, what got us here is the problem. And the problem is you. And I've been waiting in the side. Of, I thought I made a good move for myself. That's what I do. And then I show up here. This is with our leader. You're in a sham well, chamois shirt. You got these shorts. The hot dog's falling out of the stand. I don't know what's going on here. And this is where you're leading us. And I know what you've been doing. I know what you've been doing. I've been getting little information here. Wait, you are dishonest. You, you're a journalist, right? Take a look at that stuff after this. What's you that? have been dishonest, going behind our back. Talk. You've been trying to recruit a Star Wars player and then a Geekdom player. We have Donica, a rising star. You've been trying to break these guys up. They don't even know. What? He's trying to trade you to like the Viper Squad. What? He's trying to make a trade. Yeah, I know what's going <laughs> whoa, on with whoa, you, whoa, and whoa, I have whoa. proof. I have proof. It's on video. It's Photoshop. It's on audio. There's audio shop then. I have a written letter. It's every shop. Certified. Let By me who? Tell you, so, so tell you what. I don't know. No, no, no. I have no idea yeah, what he's you, talking about. Trust course, me, guys. I don't course, know what he's talking about. Of course. You guys got to pass. I'm not a I'm sure. I'm sure. The best thing about you is Sarah Stratton, and she's not even here. So I'll tell you what. I'm forming my own team. I'm forming it. As of today, the Knights of Ken have begun, and a new reign is in order. That's what's happening here. I'm out of here. Jennifer, as always, a pleasure. Wait. So he's done. Wait. What was, he about you? what was he saying about you? I don't know what he's talking about. I was I was in the Caribbean for like three months. So I don't know what he's talking about. So who, whatever he's I talking about with photo right stuff, right. photoshops, what? Okay, look, here's the deal. That guy, once he joined the Lions Den, listen, you guys are my friends. That guy is a loser. He's lost. We got him in, he lost. He brings in the other guy that's like seven feet tall. He loses. Then the other girl comes in, she disappears. Basically, what happened is when he came in, you guys lost your belts. He's the loser. That's it. I haven't done anything. Viper Squad, I wouldn't even trade you. I might as well trade you to the 7-Eleven. Yeah, pff, that guy's a liar. Like, I wouldn't trust him as far as I can throw him. Tom, enough. I've heard enough. You're, you just dug your own grave there, man. I, I know. I know what's been going on. You think I'm a reporter just with sources in Hollywood? I have sources within the Schmodown. And they've been telling me that you've been doing stuff behind my back. And if that's how you're going to be with the Lions Den and with the Patriots, I don't know that I can be a part of it anymore. We had a good run. It's not true. I No, I, 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 I've heard that it is, man. I've From heard like that what? It is. is it and concrete JT, evidence? Am I the only one not knowing what's happening here? Listen, we, we're the best. We're the greatest ever. Yeah. Definitely no, that, you, you, Merle. You, you guys are but fantastic. Dude, but, dude, I need to focus. No, listen. I need to focus on my singles competition. I'm sorry. Okay. JT, may, may, yeah, maybe we'll down the line. But right now, I got to go. I'm sorry. I, what well, is happening? Well, he's a loser, too. You know what? I did try to trade him to the Viper Squad, okay? What? Yeah, he, I did. What is happening? I did, because he's a loser. Really? You know what? Screw that you guy, too. You to trade him? I'm going to ask you something, JT. Everybody else has left. Are you going to leave me, too? Are you going to believe in this hogwash? We were the best champions ever. If Jeff feels like you did something wrong and that he's going to leave... And Ken feels like he's, that you've done something wrong and he's going to leave too. 
If those two guys are going to walk away, well, then they're losers too. I'm with you, buddy. Poof, that's all I need in life. And what a turn of events there. Ken Napsok calling out Dagnino, kicking Dagnino out of the lion's den. Who would have seen that coming? Jeff Snyder walks off. JTE walks off with Dagnino, and, and it is just in total disarray. What's going on? You look, the Patriots and the Lions then lose. That looks like the last of the of the of the Lions, and I didn't see that coming at all. That was shocking. Chris, in shades of when the Bon Jovi slippery when wet tour ended in Mexico City, guys got on different planes to different destinations. Who knows where they're going to end up? The Lions then could it actually be no more? Well, what's going on with those letters? Again, those corruption letters over and over throughout this entire event, and we've got it. Through and now the Patriots have it, and it looks like that's the end of this amazing faction that we've seen. Tom Dagnino just outs and walks away. JT kind of walks after him. I don't even know. I mean, that was confusing. But above the line, taking it in and and just, uh, uh, you know, the whole, this was a match. Sam says he has a little bit of an announcement that he wants to make down the line. I, I don't know what's happening, but all I know is that this match was, was pretty phenomenal. I, I think what these folks at Game Interviews prove, a, a number of things, but one of them is that these Iron Man matches really do something to you mentally, Me too. emotionally, physically, as well as up here at the announcer desk. You and I are luckily still buddies. I don't know what can be said about all the backstage mayhem, but I will say this. We have proven this thing twice now. The Iron Man is a great, full, thorough test of your movie trivia know how above the line deserving champions it is today. and it was sad to see the patriots after this amazing run kind of split but uh you know you can't weird you, it's it's just this was this was ah, off-putting collision was was one of the craziest things that i've seen <laughs> so what an event we've had here today i mean you look at all the championship matches that we've had you look at the uh the match between guy and merle and the the inner geek to match star the wars triple, geeks, everything that movies we what a collider collision it was incredible i'm exhausted mark ellis how you feeling oh man i need a sandwich and a brewski i would like to give a huge round of applause to all the crew everybody behind the scenes working here today apparently nobody else in the studio cares about them but i I do, Christian. All right. I know you do, too. Thank you to everybody. Check out our Patreon and the Showdown Rundown on Thank iTunes. you guys very much, and we will see oh, you. Uh, Christian, Christian, oh. one more thing. Sorry, Christian Mark. No. Hi, guys. Uh, uh, yeah. Just one more thing before we guys leave. Uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. Great Collider Collision. Really happy with everything. It's been a wonderful day. Uh, I just want to give an announcement about the team tournaments. Okay. So, oh boy. the team tournaments coming up soon. We have 16 teams this year in the team tournament, the Ultimate Schmodown Team Tournament 2018. The theme is anarchy. The theme is anarchy. This is not your father's tournament. We're going to take competitors' names from a hat, draw them at random, and pair them up. No teams in their current state will be paired up. This is completely random. The winning team will play the current team champions at Spectacular 3. I have no further comments. I have no more comments on this. That's what's happening. Oh, holy oh, look shit. No. Oh, All right. Wait a second. Oh, God. Look at that. Look who's over there. Look at him. Oh, he's, he's bitching about it. Look, he's, been, he's not. Yeah, look, oh, look at him. Look at him. He's like a conductor. Whoa, whoa. Careful, careful, careful. Whoa, careful, careful. This is, uh, he's a conductor. This is. Uh, he's a conductor. And there's just chaos ensuing, and there's Mike Kowalski smiling. I mean, we've got to go. We're out of here. We'll see you on Tuesday.